Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be doing a review on the MacBook Pro 2012 model. Now this is the one with the Retina display. We picked it up a week ago, and now we're ready for an in-depth review. Now the Retina display model only comes in 15 inches, so you can see that's the one I have right here. The first thing you'll probably notice is there is no disk drive. That has been taken away, uh, and they use the space for the internals of the computer and the second thing you'll notice is it's a little thinner than the previous version so if we get an up close look at it so as you can see the height is 0.7 inches so it's somewhere between the older model and the MacBook Air on the left side you'll notice the charging port which is slightly smaller and you'll need an adapter to work with previous models two Thunderbolt ports a USB 2 and 3.0 and then a place to plug in your headphones on the right side, you'll get another USB port, a place for HDMI, and then an SD card slot. Similar to the previous MacBook Pro, this one has a light-up keyboard that can be adjusted using the two buttons on the top. And if you're not used to using a 15 or higher inch uh, display, you'll notice that the two speaker grills on the side produce a higher quality audio than the smaller versions. But now onto the main feature, the retina display. You see, as we open up the computer right here, you'll see that the resolution on this MacBook is completely stunning. It's the main feature and the main reason you get this right now. That being said, a lot of the web and a lot of applications still in the App Store are not updated, so you're not going to get the full effect in many ways. Although you might not be able to see it, apps like Twitter are obviously not optimized and look far worse on the display. Reader and Twitterific are two examples of applications that are updated for Retina support and you can see they do look really, really great. Browsing the internet is a lot better than I originally thought it would be. Of course there will be some images that are pixely because they're not updated. However, Safari does a good job converting text into higher resolution along with upscaling images, playing them and making them look better. You can purchase the MacBook Pro with Retina display in two models. The lower one which comes in at $2200 and then the high end which comes at in at $2,800 and you can see um, the differences as we scroll down right here. The one I have, which is the lower end, is a 2.3 gigahertz uh, Core i7 processor opposed to a 2.6 Core i7 processor that you get with a more expensive one. Some other important details um, come down to storage. Now the storage in this device is flash so you'll get a 256 gigabyte storage for the lower end and then if you buy the upper end you can get 510 or 512 gigabytes and you can configure that all the way up to 768 gigabytes of storage. One downside of the new device is going to be completely hard to repair as Apple has implemented uh, torque screws along with soldering RAM uh, onto the motherboard. Many little things will make it so Apple is pretty much the only store they will be able to fix your device. The large battery in the MacBook Pro balances the high resolution that it has to perform. As for heat, you will not notice the fans turning on at all using it, the device casually. However, if you are exporting a movie or playing a game, the device can get a little warm, but nothing as severe as what was expected before the release. So the three major setbacks in this computer consist of the not being able to customize and fix your computer if anything goes wrong. Two, not all applications in the web is updated for Retina to support, so not everything will look as good as you think it will. And three, the computer is extremely expensive starting at $2,200, so you're going to have to have a lot of money and commitment if you want to buy this device. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.